Ever wondered why the Sun, our constant companion, suddenly disappears during a solar eclipse? It's a question that has intrigued humans for centuries, and the answer lies in the cosmic dance of our universe. Let's take a journey into the cosmos to understand this fascinating phenomenon. Solar eclipses occur when the Moon, in its orbit around the Earth, aligns perfectly between the Sun and our planet. This alignment casts a shadow on the Earth's surface, temporarily blocking our view of the Sun. It's a captivating spectacle, a testament to the intricate choreography of celestial bodies. Yet this dance isn't just about the Sun and the Earth. Our Moon plays a pivotal role. It's the Moon's journey around the Earth that sets the stage for this extraordinary event. But if the Moon orbits the Earth every month, why don't we witness a solar eclipse each time? So what causes this remarkable event and why doesn't it happen every month? To understand solar eclipses, we first need to understand the Moon's orbit. Now, let's imagine our celestial neighborhood. Earth is spinning on its axis while taking a leisurely journey around the Sun, and the Moon is doing its own dance around Earth. The Moon's orbit is not a perfect circle, and it's not in the same plane as the Earth's orbit around the Sun. This is where things get interesting. The Moon's orbit is inclined at an angle of about 5 degrees to the Earth's orbit. Picture two hula hoops one inside the other but tilted so they intersect at two points. These points of intersection are called nodes. Now the Moon doesn't always pass directly between the Earth and the Sun each month. In fact, the Moon needs to be near a node at the time of a new Moon for a solar eclipse to occur. If it's too far from a node, no eclipse. Why you ask? Well think of it this way, if the Moon is above or below the plane of Earth's orbit, it's not going to block the Sun, even if it's directly between the Earth and the Sun. It's like trying to block a spotlight with a small ball held too high or too low. The light just goes right around it. But every once in a while the Moon finds itself directly between the Sun and the Earth at just the right spot in its orbit. When that happens the Moon casts a shadow on the Earth, and voila, we have a solar eclipse. Let's add another layer to this cosmic ballet. The Moon's orbit around Earth is not static, it wobbles or precesses over time. This means the nodes, those points where the Moon's orbit crosses the Earth's orbit, slowly move. This gradual shift affects when, where, and how often solar eclipses can happen. It's this tilt in the Moon's orbit, along with the precession of the lunar orbit, that makes solar eclipses relatively rare events. So, the next time you see one, remember it's not just a spectacle, it's a celestial ballet that's been billions of years in the making. Did you know there are different types of solar eclipses? That's right, not all solar eclipses are created equal. In fact, there are three primary types of solar eclipses we can observe from Earth, total, partial, and annular. Each offers its own unique spectacle and is determined by the specific alignment of the Sun, Moon, and Earth. Let's start with the total solar eclipse. This is the most dramatic and rare type of solar eclipse. When the Moon is close enough to the Earth, it completely blocks the Sun's light, plunging us into a brief but surreal daytime darkness. It's during this moment, you can witness the Sun's radiant corona shimmering around the darkened Moon. Next up, we have the partial solar eclipse. As the name suggests, during a partial eclipse, only a portion of the Sun is obscured by the Moon. This happens when the three celestial bodies aren't perfectly aligned. It's like watching the Moon take a bite out of the Sun, with the size of the bite varying depending on your location and the specific alignment of the Sun and Moon. Lastly, we have the annular solar eclipse. This occurs when the Moon is at its furthest point from the Earth in its orbit, making it appear smaller in the sky. As a result, it doesn't completely cover the Sun, leaving a bright, fiery ring or annulus visible around the Moon. This phenomenon is often referred to as the Ring of Fire, and it's a sight to behold. So whether it's the dramatic darkness of a total solar eclipse, the intriguing imperfection of a partial eclipse, or the dazzling Ring of Fire during an annular eclipse, each type of solar eclipse brings its own unique spectacle. The type of eclipse we experience depends on the intricate cosmic dance between the Earth, Sun, and Moon, and their respective distances from each other. Each type of solar eclipse offers a unique and awe-inspiring view. So the next time you have the opportunity to witness this celestial event, remember, you're not just looking at an eclipse, but experiencing a cosmic ballet of celestial bodies in motion. Have you ever seen a diamond ring in the sky? This isn't a riddle, it's an awe-inspiring phenomenon that occurs during a total solar eclipse. Just before and after the moon completely obscures the sun, a phase known as totality, we are treated to a celestial spectacle known as the diamond ring effect. 
You see, our moon, despite appearing smooth from afar, has a rugged, uneven surface. These lunar mountains, valleys, and craters create a unique light show. As the moon moves to cover the sun, not all sunlight is blocked at once. Small beads of brilliant sunlight manage to shine through the lunar landscape, like diamonds sparkling on a ring. This contrast between the dark moon and the radiant sun creates a visually stunning effect, akin to a diamond ring set against the backdrop of the cosmos. It's these moments of transition that can be the most breathtaking during a solar eclipse. Solar eclipses are not just beautiful, they've also contributed to some significant scientific discoveries. It's true, the breathtaking spectacle of a solar eclipse has served as more than just a celestial show. It has been a doorway to understanding the profound laws that govern our universe. And one of the most fascinating discoveries made possible by solar eclipses is the validation of Einstein's theory of general relativity. Picture it. The year is 1919. A total solar eclipse is about to occur and British astronomer Sir Arthur Eddington has a plan. He sets out on a mission to test Einstein's groundbreaking theory, which postulates that gravity is not a force transmitted across space, but a curvature of space-time by mass and energy. The total solar eclipse provides Eddington with the perfect opportunity to observe starlight bending as it passes near the sun, a prediction of Einstein's theory. The results? A triumph for Einstein, as Eddington's observations during the eclipse confirmed the predictions of general relativity. But the scientific contributions of solar eclipses don't stop there. They have also proven invaluable in studying the sun's elusive corona. This outermost layer of the sun's atmosphere is ordinarily drowned out by the sun's brilliant light. But during a total solar eclipse, the moon perfectly blocks out the sun, allowing the corona to shine in all its glory. Astronomers seize this rare chance to study the corona's structure, temperature, and dynamics, helping us understand solar winds and space weather that can impact our technology-dependent world. In a sense, solar eclipses are nature's gift to science, a rare opportunity to unravel the mysteries of the cosmos. They remind us of our place within the vast expanse of the universe and inspire us to keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep discovering. Solar eclipses have given us a unique window into the workings of our universe. Let's sum up what we've learned about solar eclipses. We embarked on this journey by exploring the cosmic dance, the intricate ballet of the sun, moon, and earth that results in this awe-inspiring spectacle. The moon, in its orbit around the earth, occasionally blocks the sun's light, causing a solar eclipse. It's a breathtaking example of the precision and predictability of our universe's mechanics. We then delved into the moon's orbit, its elliptical path around our planet, and how this orbit's slight tilt sometimes aligns the sun, moon, and earth perfectly. This alignment, though it happens infrequently, is the key to experiencing an eclipse. Next, we took a closer look at the different types of solar eclipses, each one unique. They range from total eclipses, where the moon entirely covers the sun, to annular eclipses, where the moon is too far from Earth to completely block the sun, creating a brilliant ring of fire. We also learned about partial eclipses, where the moon only covers a portion of the sun, and hybrid eclipses, a rare combination of total and annular eclipses. We then turned our attention to the diamond ring effect, a stunning phenomenon seen just before and after totality in a total solar eclipse. This occurs when the last bit of sunlight shines through the moon's rugged landscape, creating a brilliant flash of light, a celestial diamond ring. Finally, we discuss the scientific significance of solar eclipses. They have been instrumental in confirming Einstein's theory of general relativity, studying the sun's corona, and understanding the effects of sudden darkness on the environment and wildlife. So next time you watch a solar eclipse, remember you're witnessing a rare and beautiful dance of celestial bodies. It's not just an astronomical event, it's a testament to our universe's grandeur and the extraordinary ways we've come to understand it.